What is going on guys? In this video, we're going to be talking about design patterns. More specifically, we're going to be talking about the command pattern in the context of this book, Head First Design Patterns. I'm doing a whole series on every design pattern that is in this book. So if you haven't checked that out, go ahead and check that out. Uh, I find it's a, it's a good, easy read to understand some of these design patterns, gives you some great examples and things like that. So I'd highly recommend it. I'll put a link in the description section below. And some of the examples that I'm gonna use in this video are kind of based on some of the examples in this book. So you can kind of get the idea and follow along if you are reading it as well. Um, so like I said in this video, we're going to talk about the command pattern and I'm going to first define it for you. It's, it's obviously very important to understand what the definition is. Uh, and then we're going to run through an example and then I'm going to show you some of the code in my IDE, just kind of demonstrating the example uh, using real classes for a real problem, just so you get an idea of how it works. Um, so unfortunately, I found the definition from this book wasn't very good. Uh, it was a little bit too basic. Uh, so I pulled one off of Wikipedia that I thought was a little bit better. Uh, so I'm just going to read it out to you and put it on the screen at the same time. So in object oriented programming, the command pattern is a behavioral design pattern in which an object is used to encapsulate all information needed to perform an action or trigger an event at a later time. This information includes the method name, the object that owns the method, and values for the method parameters. Um, so that was a little bit of a mouthful, but, and the way that I like to think of the command pattern is a little bit different than this definition, but I like to think of it in the sense that, um, you can wrap functionality or wrap behavior in a class and in a method, and then you can kind of pop that into a slot and that slot is interchangeable with other methods. And as long as they're interoperable and adhering to the same, uh, pattern, they can fit inside that slot. So. It's all right if that doesn't make sense. I want to run through an example with you now, and it's going to be based on a popular home item. So let me just grab the image here. And for the example, we're going to be using a item that you may be familiar with. This is a Amazon Alexa. Um, it's a speaker device that a lot of people are using these days. And you can kind of ask it to do things like play music. Uh, you can, if you have a really smart house, you can ask it to, you know, turn the lights on, change the temperature of those lights. And it can do a whole bunch of other things too, like kind of connect to your fireplace. There's a whole bunch of different options here. Um, so if you didn't already know with an Alexa device, you can kind of um, encapsulate a bunch of those different behaviors in one command. So for instance, I can say to my uh, Alexa, turn on the music, right? And I can encode that to say, oh, a very particular radio station, a very particular volume setting, uh, and a whole bunch of other characteristics of that. I can also combine that with other things. So maybe when I say turn on the music, I want to turn on all my lights and set the color to red, things like that. And the way that you can imagine this is you kind of have a matrix of possibilities here of different things that you can do. So let me just draw out this grid here with a couple different commands. Okay, that's looking good. And let me give you some, oops. Okay, let me give, get some vertical lines. Okay, that's looking about right. Um, so you have this, I'm gonna introduce this idea of like slots, right? there's these different slots that you can put things in. So you can put like a music command here. You can put, you know, um, turn all the lights off or turn everything off command here. There's a whole bunch of different options here and combine different options and make Alexa basically do whatever you want, right? Now, when you're creating, and let me just take this out actually so it doesn't confuse anyone. Now, when you're, when you're using Alexa, there's only kind of two states that you can put it in. It's either in an on state or an off state for these you know, commands that we're talking about. Uh, and actually, you know what, let me just kind of demonstrate that I want to make be crystal clear about kind of the different things that can encapsulate a single command here. So let's say like we have a music class or an, a music command rather. And in, in order to kind of interact with music, we, we can either turn it on or off. We can set volume. Set volume, we can set station. Maybe we can even like set playlists or, or something like that. So set playlist. There's a whole bunch of different things that you can do here, but some of these things can be done in combination of one another. So for instance, you can't set a playlist and set a station at the same time. Those are two separate things, right? So tur turning your music device on can mean a whole number of things. It can mean, you know, you're, you're obviously setting it to on. Maybe you want to set your volume to seven and your station to 99.9 .9 or something like that. 
All right. So when you're defining a slot here, you know, your slot might say play music, all right? And it may say, you can say on here, but what does on actually entail? When it, well, in this example, it entails turning the device on, setting the volume and setting the station. Now, how do we translate those set of requirements into a binary on or off switch here, right? That's really the question that the command pattern helps you solve. And the way that we do that is by creating a class that encapsulates the behavior of the on state and then also encapsulates the behavior of the off state. And it's kind of scoped to the particular device in question. Um, so that's the general idea of the command pattern. So let's just go through a couple more examples. So we saw the music uh, slot and you know, on means you're obviously gonna turn it on. So you set volume here, you know, you set volume and then you set station is what we said. So set station or set frequency or something like that. Okay, so let's get a different color here for the next one. What if we had something like kitchen lights? Kitchen lights. Well, this is much more clear, right? Especially if you have some basic lights, it's, it's probably just, you know, on or off. So on just, you know, goes on and then off it goes off. Right, so there's no extra functionality here uh, related to kitchen lights. Maybe if you had like different temperature lights where you can set different temperatures and different brightness levels, then you can kind of combine additional functionality in here. But you can see in this example, I just want to demonstrate that this is like a simple case that's binary where it's either just on or off. Uh, the same pattern can be used. But the neat thing about the pattern is that it lets you kind of encapsulate the on behavior into an object and kind of define whatever that means. Okay, so what happens if we do something else? Like what if we want to combine these two things now so let's say we have like an all setting like we say alexa turn all the things on right so then that can mean basically the same thing but we can combine all this functionality together so we can say music on right music on music volume i'm just going to write m for music music volume we can do music maybe in this case we want to do playlist instead of uh, station playlist and then we also want to do uh, kitchen lights on, right? If we want to combine everything together, kitchen lights on. So you can see here, we're encapsulating all these different behavior into just like an abstraction for on, um, but you know, it applies differently to all these different objects. Um, so what I want to do now is take you into my IDE and show you an example of this actually working so you can see how it works in real life and how some of the interfaces and all that are set up. Uh, so I'm going to take you over into my IDE now. So I'll see you there. All right, guys. So here we are in my IDE. So I just generated a quick class diagram just to show you kind of what we're working with so that you can follow along. I'll leave this at the bottom so that you can kind of keep track of what's going on as we go through all the code here. Uh, but let me just give you the lowdown here. So starting from the top, uh, so we have a class that represents the, the device that we're gonna be using to control the different slots in this example. Uh, we have two different types of hardware. So we have like our music playing device here and then we have our kitchen lights. And then we have an interface here called command that has one method um, that must be overridden and that's an execute method. And we have a whole bunch of different classes here. So let's take a quick look at this. Uh, the one that I wanna start with is the noop command. That's just a placeholder uh, for our slots so that we don't run into null pointer exceptions. You'll see that in a moment. Um, so let's start from the left now. So music on command. So this is going to be what's activating all of our music features, things like setting the volume, setting the right station, things like that. You'll notice that for every on command for a particular type, if we see over here, there's an also a off command, which is supposed to do the inverse of that. Uh, and the same holds true for this command here, the kitchen lights off command. Um, there's also a on command. And then finally, uh, like we were discussing in the Blackboard section, uh, if you wanna turn everything off or everything on all at once, there's the corresponding uh, commands that are gonna be used here. So just back to the definition, these are the classes that are going to be kind of holding the responsibility and holding the state of activating or deactivating in this case. Now, in this case, it's just binary, but it can be multiple things. There can be three different levels of onness or offness, and you can kind of encode that into your system. Uh, so let me just bring this down to the bottom now. So I wanna keep that here for the duration of this, just so everyone could follow along. Um, so let's take a look at our classes over here. So what do we got going on? 
So uh, actually, let's start with our command because it's very simple. So like I said, we just have a basic interface. All it has is one method, which is execute. And all the other classes that we're seeing here, the no off command, the music on off command, all this stuff is all implementing this command interface. So they are all going to have an execute method. Now, before we go into each one, I just want to kind of cover the hardware that we're talking about because we're talking about kitchen lights on or off. We obviously need to know what the kitchen lights themselves do. Uh, very, very basic. I was going to add a brightness problem property here, but I, I opted to just keep it simple. Uh, so you can see this example is very, very simple. It's just binary. It's on or off, right? And, you know, I don't really have any means to activate or deactivate any hardware, but for the time being, I just put a on or off system out print line so we can follow what's going on. Now, the music class is a little bit more sophisticated because it has different properties. So it's also got volume and a station setting. So we can set the volume to a value and then we're just printing out what's going on. Uh, we also have the set station method, which does something similar. It prints out what's going on. Then we also have that binary on or off and we're also printing out what's going on again. Um, so let's go through the, the different types of commands now, starting with the most simple. Uh, so the most simple was just the no op command. Like I said, it's just a, a guard against null pointer exceptions. We'll see that in a moment. Uh, the second most simple is the kitchen lights. Um, and we can see here, there we go. Uh, we have a reference to an instance. Well, before that, actually, uh, note that we're, we're implementing that command. So I wasn't lying to you in the beginning. Uh, and note that we have a kitchen lights instance that's available to us, and that's passed in through the constructor. So when this command is instantiated, it's always with regards to a particular instance of kitchen lights. Now this, usually you only have a home with one kitchen, but you know, if you have a home with multiple rooms and maybe your command was room lights on, you may want to know which room you're talking about. So that's why it's good to have the instance in question attached to the command object so that it can perform the corresponding actions on it. And you can see here for the execute method that we're overriding, uh, it's just a very basic predictable thing. This is a kitchen light on command, so we're going to be turning it on. And conversely, in the kitchen lights off command, kitchen lights off command, we're going to be turning kitchen lights off. Super simple, easy to follow. Um, let's take a look at music here. So actually music on rather is probably a good start. Same kind of thing going on. We have a reference to a particular music player. When we set it on, we're setting the volume to five, the station to this, and obviously we're turning it on. When we're turning it off, we do the complete opposite. So we set the volume to zero, station to zero, and music off. So far, so good. So now what happens if we want to combine these different things into a particular slot? For instance, I want to tell Alexa, Alexa, turn everything on in my house, right? Uh, so that's where the everything on command comes in. Um, so you can see here in this command, we're taking in references to both the music and the kitchen lights, passing that into the constructor as we see here. And then when we execute, you know, I'm being cute here, it's party time. We're using the methods available to us for both of the objects that are being passed in. So we're turning the kitchen lights on, we're turning our music on, we're setting the volume to 10, and we're setting the station to my favorite radio station. Um, so you can see here that regardless of, well, we're going to get into the slots when we look at the Alexa device. But what should be clear is that since we're all conforming to this the single interface, um, these different commands are interoperable. So you can kind of put them in different slots in different states at different times uh, and just remove one, pop in another and everything just kind of works pretty seamlessly. Um, so in terms of the Alexa device now, this is where kind of some of the, the magic happens in terms of the slots, so to speak. So we can see here that uh, we're holding an array of on commands and off commands. We're setting our slots to three in our constructor here, uh, what are we doing? So we're, we're creating a array with, you know, size slots length for both on and off. And then we're looping through each and we're just setting them initially to a no op command. This helps protect us from null pointer exceptions. Like I said, we're going to see that down below in a second here. Uh, our next method is going to be called during the main method that actually kind of sets up the Alexa device. And so what we're saying is, okay, for slot, whatever, we want the on command to be this and the off command to be this. So you can start seeing how this is interoperable, right? So you can say for slot one, you want kitchen lights on, kitchen lights off. Uh, for slot two, you want, you know, something else here and something else there. 
Um, and taking a look a little bit further, uh, we're just checking to make sure on command or off command aren't null or else that'll cause a problem. So we just throw an exception and then we're just setting the corresponding slot, uh, the corresponding slots on or off command to the corresponding argument that was passed in the on being the on and the off being the off. So far, so good. Next one, we're looking at the activation here. So we have an activate slot or a deact and a deactivate slot rather. Uh, and we're just calling the execute method on the instance of the command that is in that slot. And the same is true for the deactivate slot method. And then down here for the two string, I'm just doing something um, in a nice formatted print way. So you can see for each slot, what are the commands in this slot for the on and what are the commands in this slot for the off? So that's essentially what's going on here. Um, so let's take a look now at our actual main class and go through a couple examples of how this all fits together. Uh, so in our first example, super simple, and I just want to kind of demonstrate to you what's going on. Uh, so let's just print this out. So we just have a new Alexa device and we're printing out the Alexa. So this is going to be calling that to string method. Let's run this guy and see what happens. Uh, so just pulling this over a little bit. So there we go. Um, now, so we have slot zero, no op command everywhere, right? So everything's looking good. Uh, we don't need to worry about null pointer exceptions. So that's great. Let's just comment that out now and move down to some more interesting examples. Um, so what do we got going over here? Comment this stuff out so we can see what's happening. And I need some imports, fabulous. Uh, import class. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, so what are we doing here? So same thing, we're creating a Alexa device. Uh, we are creating an instance of the kitchen lights because remember we have to take that in as arguments to our on or off commands And then we're calling our Alexa devices command setter and we want to say for slot zero We want to do the uh, kitchen lights on command for this instance of kitchen lights And then the same thing for the off state again passing in the same instance Then we're just going to print all this out and then we're going to call the activate and the deactivate method of this uh, Alexa device. And if you recall over here on the kitchen lights, uh, when it goes on or off, we should see turning on kitchen lights, turning off kitchen lights. So that's the expectation um, going back to main rather. Let's see if this all worked correctly. Run and then I'll pull this out. Oops. So what do we got going on here? A little bit more. Uh, so we see at the top for our device controller for slot zero, kitchen lights on command is now present. That's great. And kitchen light off command is now present. That's great. Uh, we see when we ran the activate command, we turn them on. And then we ran the deactivate command, we turn them off. So far, so good. Everything is pretty predictable. Let's move on to the final, more interesting example, which combines uh, multiple different pieces of hardware together. Um, so let's scroll down. Here we go. Let me scroll up here and uncomment and center this so everyone can see. Okay, perfect. So this is kind of like the party mode uh, where you want to turn everything on all at once. So again, we're creating a reference to our Alexa device. We're creating an instance of our kitchen lights and our music. And then we're setting the command in slot one this time. And we want to use the everything on command. Uh, and that's going to basically call the, the music, uh, set volume to, I believe I put five or 10, I can't remember, uh, set the station to whatever it was being set to, so on and so forth. Same thing for lights, we're just gonna turn them on. And then in the everything off command, uh, we're doing the opposite of that. We're gonna print it out and then activate and deactivate. When we activate, we should see it's party time and everything turning on. And when we deactivate, we should see party time is over and everything turning off. So let's just give this another run now and just verify what happened. Uh, oh, I need to pull this out, don't I? Okay, so what do we have here? Uh, so slot zero is empty, great. Slot one is everything on command, everything off command, perfect. And then when we activate it, we see it's party time. We're turning on the kitchen lights. We're turning on the music. We're turning the volume to 10, setting the station to my favorite station. And then unfortunately, party time's over and we are turning everything off. Um, so we're seeing here that everything was working correctly. I'll make this code available to you below, but hopefully it's clear um, again by looking at the diagram here at the bottom or now in the center, just kind of how this all fits together and how easy it is to kind of interchange different functionalities using a class instance 
um, with different slots in this case. Uh, so I hope you found this video useful. I have a whole series on all the design patterns um, that are talked about in this book, Head First Design Pattern. I'll put the playlist in the description and on the right here. And I'll put the link for this book down below as well if you're interested in picking it up. So if you like this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you next time. Take care.